Welcome to a podcast about goal setting. So we spoke in sports psychology about continuums. With goal setting, we have short-term goals, and then we have long-term goals. And a goal is setting yourself something to achieve. So with short-term goals, that might be something like qualifying for an event next weekend, maybe it's the area athletics, or it might be uh, playing particularly well in a particular fixture, whereas long-term goals tend to be more sort of months or years, or perhaps like a four-year Olympic cycle um, where trying to podium is the aim, aim of the game. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about macro, meso, and micro cycles in a moment, so I'll just pop those on the board and we'll come back to them. And what we're going to talk about now is an acronym known as SMART, S-M-A-R-T. Um, so remember SMART, if you're SMART, you're SMART. Um, the acronym SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic, put the S on there, and Time Bound. Okay, so let's break down each one of these and give them a little bit of meaning. So when you set a specific goal, um, you heard the term specificity in P, you set a goal that is very relevant to your sport. So it's relevant to your sport and it's relevant to your aims, what you want to get out of that sport. So a specific goal might be something like, I want to finish at the top of the league. I want my team to finish at the top of the league or I want to finish at the top of the athletics league. So you're setting yourself a very specific goal in order to achieve it. Measurable is how you measure that. So how do you account for it? How do you check on it? So it's that checking of progress. So in athletics, it might be that you're getting faster or you're throwing an object further. So you have a measurable outcome, like a variable that you can test and say, yeah, I'm making improvements bit by bit because I'm throwing the object further or I'm running or I'm swimming faster. Whereas achievable is slightly different, okay? So achievable, we talk about a task that you can achieve. So it is realistic to achieve it. I always remember this because you've got A for achievable and A for achieve. So it's a a task you can actually do, something you, yeah, it's within your capabilities and it's not an unrealistic goal. And students often get confused between um, achievable and realistic because they kind of sound the same on the surface of things. However, this is the same, it's a task that you have the resources to be able, it's a task you have the resources, so R for realistic, R for resources. So achievable is, yes, you can achieve it, you have the ability to do so, so you have the ability, whereas realistic is, do you have the resources? You know, do you have access to a swimming pool um, five days a week? Do you have transport to be able to get to those events, to hit the goals that you're setting yourself? Do you have a coach that's in your corner that's trying to work with you to get better? So that's the difference between achievable and realistic. Achievable is for uh, ability to do it. You know, are you good enough uh, at the moment? And realistic is more to do with resources. So R for realistic, R for resources. And last part of the SMART targets um, uh, is to do with time bounds. Do you have enough time? So if you're trying to qualify for Olympics um, within four years, have you given yourself enough time in your training program to be able to hit that goal? Is, you know, is it smart? Is it a smart target? So when we put these together, we call these smart targets and they define um, goal setting in sport. So we're going to talk now about benefits of setting goals in sport. Uh, The biggest benefit that there is, is it increases motivation. So motivation levels will go up because you have something to aim for. So that keeps you in the here and now and keeps you focused and makes you work really hard to try and achieve the goal that you've set yourself. The other thing that improves is it also improves persistence. You hear about this this, uh, term task persistence. And training can be quite laborious, quite tedious, quite boring at times, particularly things like weight training, quite painful for the body as well. So sometimes it's quite nice uh, when you know you've got a goal and end product to work towards, the persistence will increase. So it'll also increase persistence. Um, It will decrease stress actually, because you'll have a measurable outcome and you can kind of plot yourself going forward and making small incremental improvements, which will improve motivation. Uh, it will make you want to persist with the task, particularly when it gets difficult, but also it will decrease your stress level if you feel a bit calmer about how you're performing. Um, another thing it does, and you'll know, you'll be familiar with this term, is progressive overload. 
And you can probably relate progressive overload to your pecs because essentially what progressive overload is, it's making gradual little improvements over time, aiming towards your end goal. So that term progressive overload is a really key one in GCSE and it's one that you need to get very familiar with. Um, the last bullet point is really just talking about um, how this can relate to something called periodization. And periodization is technically on the A-level syllabus, it isn't on the GCSE. But having an understanding of it will definitely help. And this diagram, you're probably wondering what it is on my left. This diagram is a periodization table. And we have three types of goals within, um, within periodization. Um, we have, first of all, we have macro goals. So macro are big goals. Macro are big long-term goals. So this could be potentially a four-year goal. It might be to qualify for the Olympics and get on the podium. We can use people podium potential athletes, okay? Or essentially, it might be um, maybe you're trying to get a PB over a year. You're a swimmer or an athlete, and you want to get faster, quicker, and more efficient. And shaving seconds off that time over a year is quite smart. It's a smart target. It's realistic. It's achievable. Whereas what we also have is something called meso cycles. These are all called cycles, by the way. We have macro cycles, we've spoken about that already. We have these things called meso cycles. Now I've drawn 12 weeks here because essentially a meso cycle, sorry, 12 months, not weeks, a meso cycle could break down into monthly targets. So maybe you want over three years, you want to get two seconds faster at 100 meter front crawl, then you could break that down into 24 months potentially and try and shave off maybe uh, a tenth of a second each month, which is quite a sort of realistic and achievable way to do it. The other types of cycles we have is these ones called micro, and they're the smallest ones, hence the word micro. And micro cycle so could actually be the week, so this could be like 52 weeks of the year, um, and it breaks it down e even, even smaller. So essentially within periodization, what we've got is we've got our long-term goals, which are the macro cycles, and we've got our sort of short-term goals, which are the micro and meso cycles. So if you can remember all that, that's goal setting, setting in a nutshell. Um, it's a really positive thing for all athletes, particularly at the elite level, at the top of the pyramid, where athletes are um, at their best.